Welcome to my lecture online. In this series, we're exploring how miraculous it is that we're actually here for a variety of reasons. And so here we are touching upon some of these reasons. We've talked about being near the correct star. We talked about being on a terrestrial planet. We've, we've discovered that the vast majority of planets out there, and of course that's hundreds of billions of planets, most of those are gas planets, they're not terrestrial planets. Terrestrial planets are a planet you can actually walk on a gas planet. There's no surface, you just kind of sink right into the planet trying to land on it. So for life to exist, for us to exist, we needed a terrestrial planet. But not just any terrestrial planet. It had to be a planet of the correct size. There's kind of a minimum size for terrestrial planets that if they're not big enough, life on them is going to be virtually impossible. So when we take a look at the four terrestrial planets in our solar system, because that's a good example, and so far we haven't found any other solar systems out of the thousands and thousands of planets that we've discovered where there are four terrestrial planets near a star where potential life could exist. We found a small handful, one or two, maybe three uh, planets that could potentially harbor life, but by no means are they as ideal as our Earth is. So let's compare our Earth to the other three planets in our solar system because after all, we know far more about these four planets than any other planet in the universe or in our galaxy. Obviously, we don't know of any planets beyond our galaxy. They're just simply too far away for us to be able to detect them. And even the planets that we've detected in our own galaxy, we haven't actually detected them by taking pictures of them per se, because they're too far away and they're too small and too dim for us to see them, but we found them through secondary methods, the way that planet interacts gravitationally with the star, and from the very tiny subtle motions of the star we can deduct quite a bit of things. And then we also are able to get some sort of chemical signature through the light that comes from those planets that we can kind of figure out what might that planet consist of and whether that planet might actually have liquid water or potentially an atmosphere around it. So we are able to get some subtle information from those planets, but so far we've seen that virtually no, if any of those planets could potentially harbor life. So what makes Earth special? Regarding the size of it, notice the Earth is the biggest planet in our solar system when it comes to terrestrial planets. It's the biggest terrestrial planet. It is about 20 times as big as Mercury, about 10 times as big as Mars, and Venus is about 80% the mass of the Earth, about 90% the volume, but about 80% the mass, and so therefore Earth is indeed the largest planet. Now Venus is considered the sister planet of Earth because it's almost the same size, and you might say, well, if Venus is almost the same size, why can't it be just as good for life to be on Venus compared to the Earth? Something went wrong on Venus, and we'll touch upon that in a moment. So Mercury is far too small. The problem with being small when you're a terrestrial planet, you don't have enough gravitational force to hang on to an atmosphere. The atmosphere on Mercury has long ago left Mercury. There's no atmosphere, therefore no liquid water, and therefore life is virtually impossible. There's other reasons why Mercury makes it makes a very bad planet for life, but size is definitely the big one. When we go to the other side, we have Mars, the farthest terrestrial planet in our solar system. It's also too small, it's about twice the size of Mercury as far as mass is concerned, but the atmosphere is by and large has left Mars as well. There's just a tiny amount of atmosphere left, and because there's just a tiny amount of atmosphere, there's a tiny amount of atmospheric pressure, and therefore no liquid water can exist on the surface. We know that at one point in time, Mars had oceans of water and rivers and you name it, waterfalls, everything that goes along with having liquid water on the surface. But by now, all that water has disappeared and the only water left is below the surface and locked up in the ice sheets, both at the North and the South Pole. Other than that, you will not find any real water on Mars. And so therefore, life is virtually impossible on Mars as well. And as far as we've, we've been looking, we have not found one single shred of evidence that life has ever existed on Mars, because maybe those oceans weren't along long enough for, for life to be able to exist. So what about Venus? Venus is almost the same size of, as Earth, and so Venus was able to hang on to 
part of his atmosphere. Well, you may say, well, wait a minute, part of it, the atmospheric pressure on Venus is 90 times the atmospheric pressure on Earth. There's an enormous atmosphere around Venus, and because there's so much atmosphere around Venus, it is also extremely hot. So, what am I talking about when I say it's too small? Well, the, the closer you are to the star, the warmer it becomes. The warmer that it becomes, the more likely it is that the small gas molecules of the atmosphere can escape. And the problem with Venus was that it was so close and it received so much ultraviolet radiation that we believe that the water vapor in the atmosphere broke up from the action of the, of the uh, UV radiation from the sun, broke hydrogen and oxygen apart. Hydrogen was so light because hydrogen is a very light molecule and Venus is relatively close to the sun so the molecules move faster that much of that hydrogen was lost to space only oxygen was left and so once the hydrogen was gone then you could no longer make water because you need hydrogen and oxygen and as the ocean slowly evaporated and the hydrogen was lost the oxygen combined with carbon and we now have a very thick carbon dioxide atmosphere around Venus Another problem with Venus was that Venus rotates extremely slowly in such a way that a day on Venus lasts well over 100 days on the Earth. And because of that, it would get extremely hot. And of course, as the oceans disappeared, it continued to get hotter. And again, with that enormous amount of heat, the hydrogen would be lost. Oxygen and carbon combined makes carbon dioxide, which is a heavy enough molecule that could not move fast enough to get away from the gravitational attraction of Venus and to stay behind. So again, Venus was probably better off if it had been bigger, because if it had been bigger, maybe it would not have lost hydrogen. Size is very important when it comes to a terrestrial planet to be able to harbor life. And so it turns out with the four planets in our solar system being next to a perfect star like the sun, only Earth was just the right size and just the right location away from the sun, the right distance for life to be able to exist. Again, life exists there because we were able to hang on to the atmosphere and we could have liquid water on the surface. And that's because Earth is just the right size.